Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jordan and today I wanted to do kind of a sensitive subject video. Um, I'm going to try to share my personal stories in somewhat of like a coded encrypted way so that this doesn't get taken down from YouTube and also so that I don't get on the radar of anybody specific out there. Um, but I wanted to start this video off by saying that those of you guys that have been following my channel know that over the past couple of years after I got my diagnosis about my vision, I have been doing a lot of inner work on myself. And I've been trying to process a lot of things that have happened to me in my past, a lot of things um, like a lot of programming as far as like my childhood, like I've been trying to process a lot. Um, and so basically, um, I'm sure those of you guys that haven't been under a rock know that there's been a lot of things that have been coming up um, that are, or that's coming to light, should I say, um, based off of certain things that are happening in Hollywood or happening in like the celebrity world. And this is my own personal processing um, happened maybe a couple of, maybe two months ago, but it happened when I was like on the phone with a friend and I didn't really have a moment to process what was like coming up for me. And so yesterday I was ironically on TikTok going down a rabbit hole about a specific celebrity um, that is in trouble right now. And um, after hours of like just going down the rabbit hole, um, something in me just clicked and it was like I had this flashback of this processing, this mental processing that I had done a couple of months prior that I never really like unpacked. And so yesterday I kind of had this realization about two specific things that happened um, in my life recently in the last like five years that had me basically dancing with the devil, if you will. And um, I got really, really emotional about this and I want to do this video for a couple different reasons. I'm going to tell you um, a little bit about the two stories that happened to me when it comes to just this culture of darkness in the celebrity world, um, but also kind of like the unpacking around why I'm sharing this. Um, I'm going to dive into that like towards the end of this video. So, um, Firstly, I was going back and forth about wanting to share this information because I, although I've been very vulnerable on my channel about my own personal struggles and personal things that I've gone through, I realized that this subject matter is actually on a whole other scale of vulnerability because you actually can put yourself in danger's way um, that is very apparent about some of the stories that we've heard about people that um, have gone missing or, um, yeah. And so this share is, I was not really sure if I wanted to share this or not because of those reasons. I'm very aware of how that side of the, that side of the darkness of our world works or I'm aware of it, I should say. So I was kind of, unsure if I wanted to share my personal stories, but then I started to thinking, I started thinking about it and realizing that there's been some very brave people that have come forward over the last however long and have shared their stories, which has allowed some of these, these things to come to light. And so as I was trying to navigate being like, oh, I don't want to say anything about my own personal journey because of being scared or being worried about being put in danger, um, I started to realize about, or I started to think about like the brave people that made those sacrifices, those decisions um, in order to just like bring some things to light. And luckily they did because it really has opened up a big can of worms in our world. And so firstly, I'm recognizing that piece of this. Um, so I'm not going to say specifics really, but I'm just going to try to talk um, as in code as I can. But um, so yeah, so it's like the first thing. So essentially about in 2019, um, I like was living in Dallas and long story short, without going into so, so many details, 
I got an email from somebody that I didn't know this person personally, but I knew this person just from the different circles I was in. And this specific person had been on a reality TV show and she was in my home city. And so I got an email about something. I don't even remember the email that was said, the the email that was from her. I don't remember exactly what it said other than something about a celebrity pool party in Miami and that she, if I was interested, she was going to recommend, she was going to like connect me with somebody. And so I remember getting that email and contacting one of my close friends from high school saying, hey, this girl that I know that you know her, um, is she trustworthy? Is she shady? Like she just sent me this email and I just kind of want to know your vibe about her because I didn't know this person personally. And so my friend that I went to high school with was like, no, she's cool. Like all of that. And so Anyways, I ended up responding, I think, to her and said, yeah, like, send my information to whoever that you're going to send my information to. I may be interested in, like, attending the celebrity pool party in Miami. And so, basically, very, like, within minutes after that, I get an email with an entire itinerary description, um breakdown of attire that was required to be worn, breakdown of compensation, breakdown of uh, where we would be put up, like this whole thing. So it was very obvious. Um, The email read like celebrity pool party in Miami, uh, multi-billion dollar uh, businessmen and entertainment industry, like executives will be in attendance. This is a private uh, guest list. We won't share like all this stuff. Basically it was like, hey, this, the who's who of anyone that you're going to want to know is going to be at this party. And it being in Miami, I put two and two together about who I thought that the party, like where the party was and who the party was like had to do with. And so I get this itinerary. It says like the compensation is going to be $15,000. It's a free like hotel flight. All you have to do is show up and basically be like a hostess. They didn't use the word cocktail waitress, but they basically just said like, you're going to be there for, as entertainment, you're going to be like mixing and mingling with these very wealthy, affluent people is basically what this email said. And so I'm already like thinking this can't be real. Like this cannot be real. Who is going to pay somebody $15,000 and pay for their flight, their hotel accommodation? Like um, it said that they would do hair and makeup like before the event, like all this stuff. It was a very professional email. Um, so my curiosity was like, I want to know like more about this. I would say about like 25% of me was like actually serious about like wanting to hear what they were going to say over the phone. But the other percentage of me was like more so just like nosy and curious. So anyways, I responded to the email and was like, yeah, I may be interested. Um, you know, so-and-so this person from my hotel hometown, like she recommended me, like, I'd love to hear more about this opportunity. So I get on the call. And again, all of this stuff was happening really, really rapidly. Like I got the first email from her and then I had messaged her on Instagram to make sure it wasn't a scam. Um, I messaged her on Instagram. Then after that, like, then I got an email from them. Then after the email, I immediately got on the phone with them. Like it all happened within like probably 30 minutes to an hour very quickly. Um, and so anyways, I get on the phone with this guy who it's so funny because now looking back at it after I remember telling one of my friends, the guy sounded like a pimp. That's literally what I told my friend. You could tell that he was like possibly smoking something while he was talking to me. The way that he talked was not professional at all, but the email that I had gotten was really, really professional. And so he started to tell me about this opportunity, about the celebrity pool party. And so I, like me being me, me being like a professional person, started asking questions. And I was like, okay, so you want to fly me out there? Um, and I guess like the gist of it was that they would, like I was getting an invitation, I was going to be paid. But if I wanted to bring somebody like a friend or a boyfriend, um, they could come but they couldn't go to the party unless they paid 15 grand. And I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. Like who in their right mind would do that? So I started asking all these questions and the guy was telling me like, oh yeah, you're just going to be there. And the catch was that not only would we be like hosting this party, but we would be wearing crop tops and a G string. 
And so to me, I'm like, this sounds sketchy. Like, so y'all are coming off as if this is like a really professional, like, party with all of these multi-million dollar executives. Like, you're coming off like this is like a very professional thing. This is like me thinking, me being naive and being like, okay, so you have that piece but then you're requesting that you're going to pay us $15,000 each person. And then you're also requesting that we wear G strings and crop tops. And so in my mind, I'm thinking this is not right. Something is wrong with this. But me again, being curious and nosy, I'm like talking to this guy, I'm asking him all these questions. And he's telling me like, Hey, um, he was like, if you want to be like, famous, if you want to be like, you know, if you want to get into the entertainment industry, this is a really great opportunity because all of these people are going to be there that are the who's who of the entertainment industry. And it's basically a really great opportunity for you to rub elbows with these people. And in my mind, I'm thinking, although like little younger me had always kind of dreamed about being famous, I was thinking like, I don't have any desire to be like a movie star. I don't have like, I'm not a singer. Like I don't have like any secret talents like that. So when this person was telling this to me, I'm like, I don't really have a desire to be like in the entertainment industry. That's just not ever really been like something that I envisioned for myself. And so as he's telling me all of this about this is an opportunity, this is a like a possible thing that you can do. This is why you want to be at this event. I already was like, okay, wearing a G-string and a crop top with all of these executives in Miami, and I probably will be alone at this part, the celebrity party in Miami, um, just so I could like potentially make, maybe make $15,000 and also become the, in the music or in the entertainment industry. Like it all, I was like, in my mind, I'm thinking, hell no, <laughs> like this is an absolute, never would do this in my right mind. But again, I'm like talking to him cause I'm just kind of curious and I'm nosy. So I started asking him questions. He basically told me that like, if I want to do it, that, um, they would drop off like half of the money or three grand or something at the mall that was in Dallas, like North Park Mall. They would drop it off on a Tuesday, meet me there. And then I would get the rest of the money in the hotel room at the Fountain Blue whenever I got to Miami. And so, um, so I'm asking like him questions. I'm like, so why would you give me three grand like now in Dallas without me even actually getting there first? How do you know that I wouldn't just not show to Miami? And so I think I started asking questions that he was like, this girl is like not dumb. She's not naive. And so like after I, after that conversation got wrapped up, I think that like it was left at, oh, well, we'll let you know if we want you to come. Cause mind you, they had already seen my social media. That's a piece that I had left out that like, I guess the person that recommended me for this opportunity, this person that, um, was also in the entertainment industry, she had shared my Instagram with these people. And so anyways, the guy left the phone call, like, Hey, we will, um, we'll let you know, like if we want to move forward. And then I never heard back from them again. And it was like such a weird, like, like it's such a weird feeling thinking like I, in my mind, again, when this person said Miami and they said like, uh, people like multi-million dollar, like executives in the entertainment industry, I already had an idea about who this, this individual was that they were like throwing this party at their house. Um, because for me, when I think Miami and I think of celebrity, I think of one specific person in the entertainment industry. Um, and so anyways, when this person, when this phone call wrapped up, like I remember I told my friend, I was like, oh my God, like, I don't know if that was a scam. I don't know if I was about to get like trafficked. I don't know what that was about, but that was so weird. And, um, and it just kind of like went away. And then ironically, this specific person, this girl that recommended me to this situation, I remember going back and looking at our Instagram messages. And when I had messaged her and said, hey, I got your email about that opportunity. I just wanted to make sure that email was in fact from you. She had replied to me on Instagram and said, yeah, it's it's me. And then later, I don't know, this was like a week later, I went back and looked at our Instagram messages and she had deleted all of her messages from that thread like on Instagram. So if even now, if I can go to my Instagram or I can go to my Instagram, I can look at my messages with that specific person and you can see where I was messaging them and asking them about the email that they sent me. And I said, Hey, can I call you? Um, but all of their messages are gone. 
And so ironically, like about a year later, I started to be in close proximity to this person. We were running in the same circles and I befriended this person. And for about a year, I was friends with this person and I never brought it up ever. I think because I was like embarrassed and I didn't really want to know the truth about what had happened. Um, and I, yeah, I mean, definitely embarrassed. Like I just don't like uncomfortable conversations. And so one time, I don't know if we were drinking or what we were doing, but there was one time that I, like about a year after being very close friends with this person, I confronted it. I was like, hey, I think you tried to like sex traffic me. <laughs> I like jokingly said this. And she was like, like immediately was like, oh my God, like, and gave me this story about how her friend got scammed and how like her friend was the one that got her involved in that. But me looking back later thinking, I'm like, okay, this specific girl was already on reality TV shows. She was already in the mix. Like she was already in like the entertainment industry and just so happened to live in Dallas. And she ironically tried to like say, oh, well, no, it was my other friend that got me in it. But now looking back and thinking about it, I'm like, but why wouldn't it have been you that like was actually the main source of this? Because you're the one that's already connected to the entertainment industry. Um, and so anyways, like after that, after I kind of confronted that, we never talked about it again because shortly after I left town, like I, I became a digital nomad for two years, like when I went to Thailand and I just never like talked about it again to her. And granted, this is a very short version, um, but I even went back like yesterday and today, like looked at the email that I got, the itinerary, like all of that. And which leads me to the next scenario of, again, um, this is, so that was 2019, September of 2019. I think I looked, it was September 19th that, or September, it was September 24th of 2019. I got that email um, about a celebrity pool party in Miami. And um, anyways, so fast forward to February of 2020. So only a couple of months later, I was in Miami for Super Bowl. My childhood best friend um, who used to play in the NFL, he really wanted to go to Miami because um, because he wanted to like go to all the NFL parties. And I was like, I have a friend in Miami, like one of my girlfriends lived in Miami. So I was like, whatever, I'll go. I literally booked a flight this like same day flight and went to Miami the weekend of the Super Bowl um, just because I was like had nothing to do. I was an entrepreneur, like could literally make that decision if I wanted, to just hop on a flight and leave the same day. And so I did. And so this leads me to like the second s scenario. So ironically, during the time that I was in Miami for Super Bowl week, and I think I was there for like four or five days. And I don't remember what day it was, but basically I was with my group of girlfriends. Well, I knew one of the girls and then I was there with her girlfriends and the girl that I knew lived in Miami. And so um, ironically, we found ourselves at a private party on Star Island, which again, if you put two and two together, who lives on Star Island, somebody in the entertainment industry, we end up at a uh, we end up at a party at Star Island, and um, I, I think it was the day of the Super Bowl, so it must have been on a Sunday. And we get there, and it was like I don't know, it was dark outside, but it was not late. It was maybe like eight p.m., maybe nine p.m. I don't really know, but I remember that there was people on the lawn. Like and this property was like waterfront, so there was people like on the like on the in the backyard but like on like the lawn area and there was fireworks going off and we were there for a very short period of time because there was like nothing really going on there there was like people there to watch the fireworks but there was like no music there was like it wasn't a party yet and you could tell that we had just gotten there really early um and so we had decided that we we're like, oh, well, we're just going to leave here. But I'll say that like when we found out about this party, we were all like, oh, my God, I can't believe that we're having the opportunity to go to this very, very famous person's house. Like, this is crazy. Like, this is like a once in a lifetime thing. This never happened. So 
we went to that to the house and there was nothing really going on there. There was probably like, I don't know, maybe 30 or 40 people there, but nobody was like doing anything. They were just really watching the fireworks. And it seemed like we had gotten to a house party like five hours before <laughs> the house party started. So we decided that we weren't going to stay there. But while we were like trying to decide what we were going to do, we were standing out on like the like in front of the house, but like on the backside where the water was watching the fireworks, there was a guy that came up to me and he was a huge guy, like super tall, super big. Um, and he started, he like zoned in on me. And I remember thinking that I was like, I didn't really feel super cute that night. Like the girls that I was with were very, very pretty. Like I remember thinking they were way more attractive than me. And this guy like zeroed in on me. And for those of you that don't know, I am 5'1", and, like, depending on, like, what time of year, what, like, what month it is, I can be anywhere from, like, 105 to 120 pounds. Like, I'm, like, a petite person. So, anyways, this guy zeroed in on me, this really, really big guy, and he kept asking me how old I was over and over and over again with the biggest grin on his face. And he kept telling me, he's like, you're not 18. Like he so badly wanted me to be underage. And I kept telling him like, no, I am literally in my late twenties. Like I, uh, I might've even been 30 at the time, but I, I kept, no, I wasn't 30. I was in my late twenties. And I kept telling him, I'm like, I am like 29 years old. I am not underage, but he really, really wanted me to be underage. And I remember thinking how creepy it was. Like, I was like, what in the world is wrong with this guy? Like, and why is he so okay with like letting, why is it so okay that he's being so public about wanting me to be underage? Like, it was like, I feel, I thought that like, if people were like into that type of thing, it was like under the radar. Nobody really talked about it. It's something you kept to yourself. But the guy was like very open about telling me and telling my friends about how he thought I was underage and how he like liked that. And so this was another thing that happened that out of these two scenarios with a specific celebrity in the entertainment industry that is known to live in Miami, two things that happened almost like around six months apart. And so over the past like couple of months, I've been, as I've been watching TikTok and watching like all of the stuff that's unraveling about certain people in the entertainment industry, it kind of has hit me that I'm like, oh my God, like I have been in two situations that were like so close to that dark side, like so close to me potentially being in the mix of that. And I just now realized it. And over the past couple of months and specifically like yesterday, I really started getting upset about like, I can't believe that I was basically like, in the devil's house. Like I, in one specific moment, the Super Bowl weekend, I was at the devil's house, literally on their front, like in their back, on their backyard, like watching fireworks. And I just started processing this and feeling like so much shame about how I can't believe that I had like even been in circles where that was even a possibility. But then I also was like feeling so much gratitude. I am feeling so much gratitude that these women that I'm seeing their stories on TikTok, that like, that could have been me. This like little celebrity pool party in Miami that I got invited to, to come entertain multi-million dollar executives. Now that we know about what's going on at those celebrity pool parties or celebrity parties, um, they're flying people in to be entertainment for these ultra rich, wealthy people. And I just have had like all of these different emotions and feelings about like a lot of shame, um, a lot of gratitude, a lot of guilt kind of for the fact that like, I can't believe some of these people experienced this really, really, really dark things. And I didn't like, I've been feeling all of these feelings about it. And then to like, as I'm processing it, feeling like, oh, well, I want to share, but then also feeling like, well, maybe I shouldn't share because this is something that potentially could put you in danger's way. Like, 
but then also feeling like, okay, well, you need to be brave. Like there's a lot of people who've been brave and have shared their stories. And that's why all this stuff is coming to light. Like I've gone through all of these feelings about like just realizing the amount of darkness that I have been around that by the grace of God, like I had such a good intuition or I had um, good discernment about like, hey, <laughs> it would be nice to potentially rub elbows with like very rich and famous people and potentially make $15,000. But no, that sounds a little bit dangerous. Or by being at like, by being in a situation where I'm like, this gentleman at this certain celebrity's house in Miami, this guy being like super zoned in on me about like thinking I'm underage and me feeling that like itch, that, that uncomfortableness about like something is wrong here. Um, like I just have been feeling all of these different feelings, like processing all of the stuff that you're, I'm seeing on the internet. And I know everybody else is, um, feeling all of these different things, but to realize that this is something that I literally, like my story could be so different than this. And, um, I'm just trying to process this. Like, I honestly am just trying to process, um, some of the things that I've been through in my life and trying to forgive myself for being in situations that like, I, shouldn't have been in or by me like trying to feel proud of myself for like listening to my intuition. Like I'm just going through like all of these weird, interesting feelings. And I wanted to share this video because a couple of reasons. Number one, you can't trust everybody. Like people that I maybe know from like my own circles, like that I thought, oh, well this person, like people like her, like that person in my mind is very much like an America's sweetheart type personality. Like people feel like that about this person. And to know that I personally feel like this person tried to set me up, like literally tried to put me in harm's way. And I've heard other stories about this happening. Like other people saying like, oh, well this female, like my friend, I thought she was my friend, set me up. Like I wanted to make this video as a reminder, do you have to be so careful about where you go, who you go with, even if you've known somebody for a year, two years, you think that they're your best friend, you have to be careful and understand that there is darkness in lots of places, even in like the most like light filled environments, the most light filled human beings you think can also carry a lot of darkness. So that's like Number one, what I wanted to share about this is be so careful. Um, you may think that this person that you know has a really great reputation. A lot of people like them, but you never know. You never know what type of mess they're in. And this is everything that's going on right now in Hollywood and the entertainment industry is a very good example of that. You never know what people are doing behind closed doors. You never know what people have done in order to get to certain places that they're in right now. So um, I know me personally, I used to be somebody who often would be envious or jealous of certain people that I felt like were getting opportunities that I wasn't getting, but it's taken me until being 33 years old to realize a lot of those people have done or do a lot of shady things in order to get to those positions. And I think that now all of that stuff is coming to the light with the entertainment industry. We're realizing that a lot of these people that we thought were just really talented or they got found or they got whatever, a lot of them have done a lot of dark stuff to get there. And it's not as glamorous. And now more than ever, I'm so thankful that like I've never found myself being so desperate for attention or so desperate for fame that I put myself in those positions because I definitely had opportunities. Um, so that's number one, why I wanted to make this video. Number two, I wanted to make this video because as I'm trying to find my own way to navigate through this like grief, this realization, this um, these emotions that I'm feeling, like Last night, I had to call my my two very good friends that, like, are very well-equipped to deal with trauma, and, like, I had to call them, and they had to walk me through, like, you are safe, like, you don't need to feel guilt, like, you are okay, essentially, and, like, I wanted to send 
this message out to other people that if you're processing either things that did happen to you or things that could have happened to you or things that you might have put yourself in harm's way unintentionally, you are not, um, I can't think of the right word, you're not like exempt from also processing like your emotions and also processing the trauma. You don't have to go through something like super, super graphic and dark and heavy to also feel trauma around it. M like my situations that I'm ex like talking about today are two situations that did not happen to me, but they could have happened to me. And realizing the places that I had put myself is enough to feel grief and shame around that. And so I wanted to make this video as well. Like if you were somebody who's just processing things that either did or didn't happen to you, that's okay. Like it's very important to be in tune with what you're feeling and let that shit out. Like confide in somebody that you trust, confide in somebody that you feel like can help you carry that darkness because it is it is like a very complex emotion to try to carry and try to move through. So I also wanted to make this video to encourage you guys, like as I'm going through my own personal healing journey, it comes in waves. Like sometimes it's beautiful. Sometimes it's really dark. This is something specifically that I just wanted to share about. I just, you know, all the stuff that's on the news right now and just realizing how close that was to me is very, very scary. So those of you guys that are processing your own stuff, which I'm sure everyone is, be kind to yourself, show yourself some love, and be grateful for the people that you have in your circles that have helped kept you safe. I will see you guys in the next video.